This is Twit. Mr. Ryan Shrout, you wrote up, uh, I actually should say you performed, you displayed, you did a video on installing Windows on the Intel SSD 750 series. Uh, what we are now referring to, I think, internally as the badass super drive from Intel. I think that's the, the uh, internal name of reference, uh, judging from the amount of drool that comes out of that one corner of uh, Alan's mouth when he talks about this drive. Was it easy? Is, is NVMe uh, a delight? Did you even notice that you were installing it on an NVMe drive, or did you spend a lot of time tweaking the BIOS and hammering your head against the nearest table? So uh, I think it was two weeks ago or something, um, mm -hmm. I posted a different story that was like, hey, let's look at the compatibility of the SSD right. 750 across some different products. Um, so once you kind of get that out of the air, right? So Intel kind of only officially supports Z97 and X99 platforms. And then you need to make sure your motherboard has the most recent uh, BIOS or UEFI to support NVMe devices. Once you have that, uh, mm -hmm. The installation of an operating system to it, like if you buy a 400 gig or a 1.2 terabyte Intel SSD 750, you install it in your system and you just want to, like you want to run, um, is really pretty straightforward. And for, for Asus BIOS, for Asus motherboards specifically, um, you don't have to enable NVMe. It kind of just shows up as a bootable device. The one thing you kind of have to make sure is enabled is that UEFI boot is enabled and not just legacy boot. In all of the cases we've run across, it is defaulting to UEFI and legacy, so it will see everything. Um, but if it's maybe something you had changed in the past, you have to enable the UEFI boot part, uh, and that will you know, that will be the same across all platforms. But once you do that, if you're installing Windows 8.1 off of a CD-ROM or off of a DVD or off of a USB drive, then when you come up to the, when you get the prompt about, hey, which drive do you want to install to, you will see the Intel SSD 750 there and that you hit, yes, I want to install to that drive and boom, you're done. It's, it's, it's really just as simple as if you had kind of your traditional SATA SSD hooked up to a controller. If you... Install uh, Windows 7 or Windows 8.0, which you should never, you should not install Windows 8.0 at this point. You should either have 7 or 8.1, and really you should have 8.1. Um, but if, you, if you're one of those guys that's holding on to Windows 7, you can still install it to that. You just have to load the driver uh, during that setup process, so, right? When, you bring, when it brings up the screen of, well, which, which drives are available, it won't show anything. You click have disk give it, uh, you know, the, the file that you've downloaded from Intel's website, and it will... Then load that driver, see the drive, and you can go through installation. And then you install Windows as you normally would. It installs exceptionally quickly. Uh, so if you're trying to time it, you know, it's going to be way faster than if you, if, if the last time you've installed Windows 8.1 was on, say, a two terabyte hard drive, it's going to be a very different experience uh, than when you install it onto an SSD 750. Um, when you get into Windows, you should go to Intel's driver site and download their latest software there and install that. It's it's not necessary for functionality, but it will get you the best possible performance out of the drive itself. So it just kind of tweaks the NVMe settings. It recognizes everything correctly. It adjusts QDEPs accordingly, and, and boom, you're off and running. But uh, it... It's really quite easy to to get up and running because I, I know when we say, hey, you know, we've got to, there's this PCI Express SSD and it uses a new protocol called NVMe. Uh, it, it can be, it can seem a little daunting maybe. It's like, oh, I don't want to deal with that. I'll just make it a secondary drive maybe. I'll still install to my SATA disk or to this hard drive or something like that. And you don't have to do that. If, if the BIOS sees the SSD, boom, you're kind of, you're ready to roll, right? And Windows 10 has support right. for it as well out of the box, just like Windows 8.1 does. So... Uh, it's a very easy process, and that is, to be honest with you, that is why it took as long for us to get a consumer variant of an NVMe SSD as it did. The P3700, which was Intel's uh, enterprise version of this drive, came out a year ago, like more than I think a full year ago almost exactly. Um, but they weren't trying to boot off of those. They right. were trying right. to use them as scratch disks and, and you know that type of stuff for incredibly fast data access. The biggest hurdle was making sure they could get enough motherboards and enough BIOS and enough motherboard manufacturers updated and ready and prepared to really start rolling this out. So, you know, all future platforms that you see, uh, definitely from Intel and probably even from AMD, realistically, will support NVMe boot. So uh, that'll be both in desktops and laptops because we're starting to see NVMe drives come out in uh, M.2 form factors as well. So uh, th there's a lot to like about it. If you're worried about buying this and installing to it, short, very story tutorial that has, I think it, I think it has four steps, but one of those, it's one of those smart Alex stories where the step, the last step is like, and you're all done. So it's really like three steps 
to get it going. And it's really no different than installing to a regular SSD. So good news there.